Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahedo Bible Study Podcast. As always, the three S's, share, support, and subscribe. You can subscribe wherever you hear this, be it YouTube, Transistor, Anchor, Google, Spotify, Apple. You can subscribe anywhere. You can share by sharing the actual words that you hear or by sharing the link to where you heard this information. And you can support by subscribing to the newsletter at $5 a month at aksum.substack.com. That's A-K-S-U-M dot substack.com. Or at any level at patreon.com slash tawahado. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O. We are moving slowly but surely through John's revelation, also known as the apocalypse or the uncovering. We're in chapter four today. It's a very short chapter. So those of you who like short chapters, rejoice, be jubilant. I will say my notes here at the top so that we can end on God's word. So I could just read it in in one go. And today I'll read from the new revised standard version, the NRSV. So we need to familiarize ourselves with not just any old Hebrew, not Hebrew as it's spoken, modern Hebrew that is in the state of Israel, but the Hebrew of the Hebrew Bible, because it is the subtext to the text of the New Testament authors. So we will see the word heaven being used. Whenever you see the word heaven, in the New Testament. Sometimes you'll see sky, sometimes you'll see heaven singular, sometimes you'll see heaven plural. What we're talking about is a place that is unreachable. It's an unreachable domain for the human being. I don't want to hear anything about NASA or about Sputnik or about moon landings or about whether or not space is fake. Functionally, for you as the hearer, space is fake. You cannot reach the Shamaim. The Shamaim, a uh, Hebrew word related to the Giz word, Samayat, Shamaim and Samayat are the heavens. And it is plural, just like the word Elohim is plural, but that does not mean that in every usage it needs to be understood that way. The main functional point when you hear the word heaven is it's an unreachable, unattainable place for the opposite of that. The groundling, the human being, is the groundling. The Adam is of the Adama. The groundling is of the ground, formed from the Afar or the Afar, the dust of the ground. So remember that. The trumpet, anytime you hear trumpet, goes back to the Hebrew word shofar. And the Hebrew shofar is a musical instrument used to express joy, used to celebrate festivities, feasts, holidays, and used as a war cry, used as a battle cry. So just think contextually, it could be a joyous occasion, it could be a festival, a holy day, or it could be an occasion of battle. The throne is a seat. And in the original language, there is no distinction between throne and seat. And so when you see somebody sitting in a seat, it has the same connotation as that last vestige of the old world in the United States, which is the function of a judge. All rise, you are told when you are in the courtroom. All rise so that they can stand before the seated judge who judges them, plaintiff and defendant, even today in 2020, in courthouses, stand on their feet while the judge sits in judgment of them. And it's a great biblical analogy and one of the last places where you can find a connection between the 21st century and the first century. We will encounter the 24 presbyters. The 24 presbyters. Presbyter is another word for elder. Other translations may say elders. Often in the Orthodox Church, we understand this as bishops or priests. And so we see a liturgical rite being celebrated 
in the heavens, in that unattainable place. There are 24 hours in a day. There were 12 tribes of Israel, and there were 12 apostles. This is no accident. You will see four living creatures, or as I preferred, the four beasts. And there were four Gospels. There are four directions, north, south, east, and west. There are four elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. And God has control over everything, human being and beast, all the directions and all of the hours of the day and all of the elements. Whether it's an earthquake, whether it is a tornado, whether it is a wildfire, or whether it is a flood, God is in control. Whether we are in the north, the south, the east, or the west, God is in control. Whether it is midnight, or it is 12 noon, or it is 6 p.m., or 6 a.m., or 3 a.m., or 3 p.m., or 9 p.m., or 9 a.m., God is in control. Remember to pray the canonical hours. Muslims pray five times a day if the Orthodox followed the canonical hours, they would pray at least seven times a day. And if we listen to Paul, we would pray at all times. Most often, in addition to whatever custom prayers we have, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, and the Psalms of David. So we will see the 24 presbyters and the four living creatures or living beasts express total submission to the God of the cosmos, the God of scripture. And you, as the hearer, need to take it or leave it. They are all submitting. The hours of the day, submit. The directions, submit. The elements, submit. The animals, submit. The human beings, including the leaders of the religious ritual, submit. So what are you going to do? This is not the Pizza Hut buffet from which you can pick and choose what to eat and what not to eat. You are not the head executive of the United States, that is to say, the POTUS, the president of the United States. You do not have the power of the line item veto that every president since Clinton has used to disrespect the judiciary and pass laws however their whims allow. We do not have that capability with the instructions found in scripture. We must accept the instructions of scripture as a totality or not at all. We must walk away or fully submit to God. Here is Revelation chapter 4. I'm going to read it in its entirety. 11 verses. 1, 2, 11. After these things, I'm switching actually to the Greek Orthodox Bible. After these things, I looked and saw a door opened in heaven. The first voice that I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me. It was saying, come up here and I will show you the things which must happen after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit and behold, there was a throne set in heaven and one sitting on the throne who had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby. There was a rainbow around the throne with the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones were 24 presbyters sitting, vested in white robes with crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came lightnings, voices, and thunders. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was something like a sea of glass similar to crystal, in the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures full of eyes on all sides. The first creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, the third creature had a human face, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Each one of the four living creatures had six wings full of eyes around and within. They have no rest day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. When the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives unto ages of ages, the 24 presbyters will fall down before him who sits on the throne 
and they will express adoration to him who lives unto ages of ages. They will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, the Holy One, to receive the glory, the honor, and the power. For you created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. Glory to God for all things.